So this is the van brace uh, that I made earlier um, using the wooden former, just to demonstrate that wooden forms can work as well as steel. You shouldn't get bogged down on that. What I want to do now is just take a quick look at various ways that you can planish a piece of material. I'm not going to concentrate on this as a van brace, a piece of armour, those will be for later videos. But what I want to do is take a look at how you can get out some of these dinks and dents, planishing from the inside and outside. So let's take it across to the stakes and we'll uh, take a look and see what we can do. So one of my major planishing tools that I use, or stakes, is this here. It's a T-stake that I've used, uh, I've altered slightly. What I've done is I've put a couple of mil dish throughout there. It's a bit tricky to see, but with the metal ruler, you can see that it starts with no light bleed. And then as we move back, it just has a little bit of light bleed uh, just through the middle portion just here. You can see my finger underneath there, and then it vanishes. The reason I've done that is because very often in the armour there might be a small dent and rather than push the surrounding material down to it I want that lifted out. So uh, I'll show you how I do that. And a very fortunate acquisition some years back is this old hammer from 1918. It's got a date stamp on the underside there. I have no idea of its original purpose um, but it's fantastic for planishing uh, curves from the inside out. And I do an awful lot of my planishing from the inside out, uh, as much as possible in fact. I just find it easier, makes for a much smoother surface um, on the outside than I'd otherwise have. But what I have is this small depression just here that I need to lift out of that material, like I say, rather than push that down into it. So what I do is I put it in my uh, stake that I've got that slight uh, dome in, reverse dome in there, and just tap it through from behind. tends to happen on the inside, as you can tell when you're working in the correct area, is because you get little bits of hammer scale tending to flake off as that material has been deformed down and into it, and you know you're in the right space. Another secret, or not secret, another technique I use is to put my finger on the space. We'll try and find another one now I've pushed that out. There we go. So I'll put my finger on the space, offer that up to the anvil, and then just take my finger away. And I can see here already there's a slight raise on there, just from the way the light's coming off of it. So I'll just work that back too. And a quick check on the surface. Best to use your fingers and your eye. Your fingers will generally always pick up what's going on so I can tell there's some more rough area over here uh, there's a slight divot just there so again just offer that up and you can see it on this side and then work it back it's imperative not to be too hard I'm not trying to bruise the material or dent it from the inside we just don't have the width of the material here it's about gentle persuasion, you're just pushing that down ever so gently. If you rush your planishing, you can murder the piece and you can distort it very easily. The next most used piece of equipment that I have in the workshop for planishing is just my flat anvil. So we've not got onto stakes yet or anything, and I've shown this in a couple of videos in the past. I've got a great length to try and keep this as smooth as possible. As soon as you put a smash into there, there's a couple up here, and you can't use that area for planishing because you'll just drive those divots straight into your material. So we've pushed out a couple of the uh, valleys that were done before, just in this area here. Obviously I'm rushing a bit here just to show you what's going on. But what we'll do is we'll now smooth those all into one nice space just by using the flat of the anvil. And you just work your way along in even passes. And if you find the piece is jumping about in your hand like this, it's because you're working away and off of the anvil face. Now that can be useful if you do find a valley or something you need to push it down. You can come just about a mil away from the anvil face, so just about there, to push it down. But generally when you're doing this you want to work straight down, moving the piece under the hammer. You 
can see there, it's just starting to get away from me. This hammer's a bit big for when I get down to here. It's just starting to knock onto the sides. So readjust, see where your center is, just by putting the hammer on, taking your hand away, there we go, and continue working. So you see how we've started to really smooth this material down. A higher carbon steel would start to work harder, so you have to be aware of that and know what to do, which we'll cover in later videos. But for now, that's really starting to come on nice and smooth. If I was to uh, grind that back, it would come up with a fairly standard sheen at the moment. We're really rushing for the video, so I'd like to take a bit more care over a couple of pieces. But we get a good smooth finish there. Or if you're going to leave it rough from the hammer, it's vital that that is as smooth from the hammer as you can manage to make it. But now we'll take a quick look at the stakes just across the room there, and we'll see uh, how you can planish from the front down. So just before I begin planishing across on the stakes, just a quick word about planishing hammers. You need to keep the surfaces smooth. Uh, they don't need to be like mirrors. You can indeed do that if you want to. They just need to be divot free uh, and dent free. There's a tiny little piece on there. You can just pick up the fleck on the camera uh, from time to time, which will need removing. But as I work mostly in the center there, uh, we're okay. Now this is a specialist planishing hammer. It has a flat surface on there. There's a slightly more curved one there, which I use for getting into the uh, backs of greaves and uh, the uh, bend on the forearm and the van brace. But you don't need to have specialist hammers like these uh, when you get going. A standard ball peen hammer in the UK here, you can pick these up for 50p or so uh, from car boot sales and so on. I wouldn't go spending any money on them. Uh, this can be used. The only thing I tend to find with ball peens and other hammers like this is because they're that little bit heavier and a little bit smaller. If you're not paying attention, you can actually be putting in more dents on the surface or depressions on the surface than perhaps you want to. So you do have to go steady with them. Another thing that's vital is just take a grinder or some file paper if you have to and just lift the sharp edge off of this. I'll do a piece on how to modify hammers later on. Um, but you just want them ever so slightly curved, you don't want them perfectly flat and you certainly want to get rid of the straight edge uh, in the face there. And lastly, I have this small hammer. One I tend to use an awful lot for planishing. When you're trying to get into small spaces, you can get straight in. But again, because it's a small hammer, be careful you're not hitting too hard and denting the surface and actually causing more trouble than good. And again, round those corners off so if you miss blow, you're not smashing in a crescent-shaped hole in your um, armor straight away. But you don't need these specialist hammers. Any hammer you can find will work. You just need to be careful with the tools that you have. I'm going to take a quick look at how to work through here and work on the outside of the stake, on the outside of the material. And you have to be very careful here not to hit too hard and to use the wrong stake. This one's quite flat. It needs to be riding on there, not being supported by the two outside edges, otherwise you will flatten this piece of material down. But planishing from the outside um, is where most of us start, to be honest. It's quite straightforward. You just work gently in a series of strikes that smooth the surface down. I find working on the um, outside like this can be easier when you've got ever such a slight slope in there. And I was showing you this hammer earlier. I tend to use the rounder of the two faces and just come off of it gently and slowly work your way around. Always check the work regularly, see what's going on, make sure you're actually making a difference to it. It's been many a time I've been planishing too lightly because my mind's drifted off. Um, but you just check in where you are and if it's still keeping that curve in there. I don't want that bulb that's being formed there slowly, I want to ride that out nice and gently there. So I just continue to make my way up it. Now, a quick word about the way I'm holding the hammer. You're not throttling this, 
Uh, it's not going to fly out of your hand, you will exhaust yourself in no time. If you find your forearm starts to get tired quite quickly, this is where all the muscles are that control the tendons and so on in the fingers. If that's happening to you, you are throttling this too hard. Relax and just let the hammer work loosely in the hand. Try not to place your thumb on the top, that places an extra strain, uh, particularly up here because you're trying to keep your thumb out of the way. Just grip it and let it work for you. The hammer is the piece that does the work and you can planish all day. If you've got your uh, back to the wall and you've got a bit of a, a tight deadline on, you can find you starting to get panicky and you're planishing too fast. It becomes counterproductive. You just exhaust yourself, just relax into it. And as I was told very early days when I was armoring, just learn the zen of planishing. Just get into a place where you're just knocking that away and make sure above all you have your um, uh, ear, ear defenders on, otherwise uh, this is a surefire way to injure your hearing and just let the hammer work for you. The final technique I'm going to look at is just how to planish from the inside again, um, but into these curves. Planishing hammers and so on are great, but if you don't have a decent ball stake to go underneath them, uh, as we were just working on there, you can deform the material, cause all sorts of mischief. You just need any old piece of metal with a slight curve on it. This is the T-bar uh, stake that we were looking at earlier. This is the wider end. And all I do is, I can see here it's starting to get malformed, uh, or just the, the work earlier has dented it across here where I was working it quite hard to make sure that it would uh, fit my arm correctly. And I just want to smooth that out. Now I can work the surface and continue going there, but I'll pull it out. I don't really want to do that. There's a nice curve in there at the moment. So to preserve that, I just get a hammer. And this one I've shown before, where I've just rounded the face off. It's got a scutching hammer. It's uh, something that bricklayers use. It holds teeth, so you just cut that bit off and burr it round. And all you do is you put that where it needs to go over the uh, T-bar there and find the space that you want to work. We'll work over it because it's easy. There's a nice dent there. So what you do is you just offer that onto it and get inside. The scutching hammer has a little curve to it, which is lovely for getting inside these spaces. And just work your way along. Check the material, you can see where it's gone, a bit shinier just on here is where it's just starting uh, to walk itself down. There's another bit there, I'll just do that quickly. working out just fine across there now starting to go it takes a little bit of time with the hammer because they're small blows inside but it smooths them off lovely and it lets you keep a really good control of any complicated shapes you might be doing so it's just a quick look at some of the different ways that you can planish obviously they all take practice there'll be ones that you prefer over uh, other techniques that's fine um, and there might indeed be other techniques and ways of planishing and certainly there are machines for the process um, but there's just like I say four quick ways of planishing and getting a job finished.